Are you curious about Walt Disney or interested in hearing his thoughts? Me too. I've found five authentic Walt Disney quotes, and I would like to share them with you and talk a little about why we might care about the quote. Well, hello there. My name's Jeremy, and welcome back to Freeform Disney, where I talk about all aspects of Disney, from the animated movies to the theme parks to Star Wars, Marvel, and Pixar, and the TV shows, and everything else in between. And that is why it's Freeform. And keep coming back every day for new daily content. If you're not subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And now, on to today's topic, five famous Walt Disney quotes. In compiling my list for this video, I ran across numerous quotes claimed to be said by Walt Disney that turned out not to be said by him at all. Heck, there was actually one that Disney itself has started to claim was a Walt quote, but actually isn't. I could do an entire video on just the subject of false quotes. There are so many of them out there. But I was able to find plenty of really good quotes that are authentically from Walt Disney. Dozens, in fact. And I picked five of them to talk about with you today. First, let's start with a famous one many of you will probably have heard of. I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing. That it all started with a mouse. Mickey meant a lot to Walt Disney, and he saw himself in Mickey as well. This quote also calls back to remembering humble beginnings and not forgetting your history. There's a lot of value in this quote, especially for Disney as a company, but also for us too. Let me share a little more of the background for this quote. It comes from the first episode of the first TV series that Disney ever made. That's the show Disneyland, or also known as Walt Disney's Disneyland. And this show is an anthology series and has since continued and eventually became known as The Wonderful World of Disney. Now that show you were probably a lot more likely to have heard of. The very first episode aired on October 27th, 1954, less than a year before Disneyland opened in July of 1955. The show was a way for Walt to go ahead and build up Disneyland for people across the country. Let me read you the full quote from Walt during the episode. During the last few years, We've ventured into a lot of different fields, and we've had the opportunity to meet and work with a lot of wonderful people. I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing, that it was all started by a mouse. Now that's why I want this part of the show to belong to Mickey, because the story of Mickey is, truthfully, the real beginning of Disneyland. Now, that's how Mickey looks today, but I remember another time when he didn't look so prosperous. First time I met Mickey, he was a hungry-looking young mouse playing in his first movie. He was so poor, he didn't even own a pair of shoes. The picture was called Plain Crazy. Now that was the year that Lindbergh flew the Atlantic. I think Disney as a company has sometimes taken missteps and forgotten its roots. But we've seen Disney return to its roots successfully on a few occasions. Such as the Renaissance era with The Little Mermaid or the Revival era with The Princess and the Frog. That last bit of Walt's quote introduces the next short that would be played in the show, but it seems chosen to further reference those humble beginnings as Walt talks about Mickey not looking so prosperous. Remember that Walt also sees Mickey as a representation of himself to a degree. And on that note, let's move on to the second quote to hear a little bit more about Mickey Mouse. In talking about Mickey, Walt Disney has said, quote, Mickey Mouse is, to me, a symbol of independence. He was a means to an end. He popped out of my mind onto a drawing pad 20 years ago on a train ride from Manhattan to Hollywood, at a time when business fortunes of my brother Roy and myself were at lowest ebb and disaster seemed right around the corner. Born of necessity, the little fellow literally freed us of immediate worry. He provided the means for expanding our organization to its present dimensions, and for extending the medium of cartoon animation toward new entertainment levels. He spelled production liberation for us. 
Remember that talk about humble beginnings and the other quote saying Mickey was poor and not looking so prosperous? This shows that connection between Walt and Mickey and how Walt often saw himself and expressed himself through Mickey. Walt and his brother Roy were in real trouble financially, and Mickey saved them. Frankly, we should all be happy that Walt loved trains. Without Mickey, I wouldn't be here talking to you about Disney right now. The third quote for today further explores Walt's initial inspirations and sheds some light on how he looked at storytelling. No story in English literature has intrigued me more than Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. It fascinated me the first time I read it as a schoolboy, and as soon as I possibly could after, I started making animated cartoons. People in Lewis Carroll's period had no time to waste on triviality. Yet Carroll, with his nonsense and fantasy, furnished a balance between seriousness and enjoyment, which everybody needed then, and still needs today. This talk about balance between seriousness and enjoyment is well reflected in Walt's movies. The Dark Ages for Disney, the time when movies like Robin Hood and The Black Cauldron came out, probably failed most on this front by focusing too heavily on seriousness and not enough on enjoyment. And there might have been a few other things that led to that as well. Of course, the opposite is also possible, and Disney has done that, especially when creating one-dimensional buffoon-type characters. Now, don't get me wrong, there are people that really enjoy the one-dimensional buffoon-type characters. I don't tend to be one of those people, though, so hey. <laughs> it is a hard line to walk. I think too often we break apart the genres of drama and comedy without really acknowledging their overlap enough. Looking at Walt's first movie, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs provides an interesting example. Originally, the movie was far more dwarf-focused. That's why Walt was interested in the movie in the first place. Heck, the movie even originally started at the dwarf's cottage. In the end, Walt realized there needed to be more of a serious story in there too, and shifted the focus to Snow White and the Evil Queen, and in the process cut out multiple scenes with the dwarfs. I think Disney's movies have been much improved because of that balance that Walt sought after. Quote number four might be how Walt would respond to Martin Scorsese when he said last year that Marvel films are not cinema. Walt said, I am interested in entertaining people, in bringing pleasure, particularly laughter to others, rather than being concerned with expressing myself with obscure creative impressions. Simply put, Walt didn't care about accolades or trying to create some lofty, hoity-toity form of cinema. And yet, some of his movies are very well respected as art. If it were me, I would probably have argued the point with Martin Scorsese and pointed out how his gangster movies could similarly have been called not cinema. In fact, gangster movies had been looked down on further back in history. And what he was doing right there kind of perpetuates that same cycle. That's what I would have said to Martin Scorsese, but I don't think Walt would have said that. I think he would have just shrugged it off and said something along the lines of, Sure, but they have entertained millions of people, and that is worth far more to me. Speaking of entertaining people, who did Walt care about entertaining? In the fifth and final quote for today, Walt said, Over at our place, we're sure of just one thing. Everybody in the world was once a child. So in planning a new picture, we don't think of grown-ups, and we don't think of children, but just of that fine, clean, unspoiled spot, deep down in every one of us, that maybe the world has made us forget, and that maybe our pictures can help recall. If you're watching this video, then you're probably one of those people in touch with your fine, clean, unspoiled spot deep down. So let's put this another way. Disney movies aren't just for kids, they're for all of us. There's nothing to feel ashamed for in enjoying them or being proud about enjoying them. It's great as an adult to enjoy Disney movies and to love going to Disneyland and Disney World too. And frankly, Walt would certainly agree on every one of those points. That's Walt's idea and his plan in making Disney and making Disney movies and making Disneyland and making Disney World. He didn't intend it as something that's for kids. 
he intended it for all of us. He intended to go ahead and actually help bring out those pieces of ourselves that we often can suppress as adults because it's not acceptable in society as a whole. Let's add some more clarity to that. Walt also has said, quote, I do not make films primarily for children. I make them for the child in all of us, whether we be six or 60. Call the child innocence. The worst of us is not without innocence, although buried deeply it might be. In my work, I try to reach and speak to that innocence, showing it the fun and joy of living, showing it that laughter is healthy, showing it that the human species, although happily ridiculous at times, is still reaching for the stars. I know that it can be difficult sometimes being an adult and loving Disney. Trust me, I know. Not everyone gets it. There are still people who think that it is childish, who will look down on you for it. That said, I feel like we live in a time where it's much more acceptable to love Disney and to be in touch with that innocence that Walt speaks of than it has been at some times in the past. So I think, hopefully, this world is getting better in that kind of acceptance. And guess what? Laughter is great. If other people can't see it, well, that's their loss. Let's be happily ridiculous and reach for the stars. And let's help spread the love so other people can help recall that part of themselves that loves things like Disney movies, the Disney parks, Star Wars, Marvel, etc. Because most people have it, even if they've pushed it down and tried to deny it. Let's love Disney and not be ashamed of loving it. After all, Walt agrees, Disney was made for all of us. What's your favorite Walt Disney quote? Would you like to see me talk about more Walt Disney quotes? I certainly have some more of them ready. Let me know down in the comments. I'm looking forward to responding to them. And thanks for watching. If you liked it, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And come back tomorrow for when I talk about the ride Soarin' over California and why I think it's great. And if you haven't done it yet, click the subscribe button and ring that bell. Have a magical day. And may the force be with you, always.